What's up guys, we are back with another NECA review and we're jumping back into Dungeons and Dragons. We've only had two figures so far, but we've got two more and we're taking a look at Zarak today. So these guys come in ultimate style packaging, which means you get like this sort of flip cover style box. So we've got some really good artwork of Zarak there on the front. And then you've got product shots on the spine. And then the back of the box gives you uh, the write-up for Zarak, as well as a loadout for his accessories, some product shots, and cross-sell for Strongheart. But then, of course, you know, it's an Ultimates box, so pop that open. And you've got a big product shot on the inside, as well as the window to see the figure. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go. Out of the package, our NECA Dungeons & Dragons Zarak figure. So our little half-orc assassin. And this guy, of course, you know, is based off the old LJN toy line, which... I don't know if I ever mentioned it in the first two reviews or not. I really have no nostalgia for it. I was aware of them, and I know what they are, but I never had them as a kid. I've always thought they looked awesome, though. Like, they're figures that I would love to have had, but never did. So this, of course, is a great opportunity to get some stuff that I don't necessarily need, but think is cool. So let's see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. At first glance, he looks really, really limited, and that's not to say that he doesn't have limitations because of his design. But he maybe moves a little better than I thought, although some of it is kind of odd, just based on how he's put together, because we've got some telltale NECA joints here. So we've got a head that is definitely locked down to start with, and that's because of the big collar thing. So he can bobble up and down a little bit. And then you've got some tilt. This head is attached to this hood. There is an unhooded head that we'll talk about. And then you've got your rotation. Arms go out at the shoulders. They, of course, rotate. We do have a bicep swivel. It's one of those NECA sort of long double-jointed elbows, and this guy really needs it. Because of this crazy frilled collar, he has about like a 90-degree bend. It could bend more if this thing was not in the way, because you're just going to hit it, and that's really what it comes down to. You're going to hit it, like even went out to the side. Like, it's going to go, and you're going to hit it just like that. So it does have range, but he's prohibited by this. You can, well, I mean, I suppose you can take it off if you want, right? You can take that off, and then you can see it does bend better than 90. It's still not like this most, you know, articulated thing ever, but it does have some range there as I throw this all over the place. And then we'll put this head back on. So you do have some range there. It's just the nature of the design. You got a little shimmy at the gauntlet too, by virtue of that joint. Lateral hinges and rotation at the wrist. What I was really concerned about, I didn't actually get that head on. There we go. What I was really concerned about was the torso because he has an overlay. Uh, he's got like the jacket, the tunic kind of thing, but it's really pliable. So he can crunch at least a decent bit. Like that's not bad for something that has something covering whatever joint structure is under there. And then he goes backwards and you've got pretty decent tilt side to side. And then of course you've got your rotation down there too. So I was kind of surprised by that, you know, happily surprised. Legs go out a good bit. They do kick forward a decent bit. You do have the tunic to, to deal with. You got backwards. We got our thigh twist up there. You've got single jointed knees. So you get 90 out of those. And then they do swivel at the top of the knee. And then you've got rocker and you got hinges down at those ankles. Rocker's pretty decent. It's not the greatest. It's not like a full on like broken ankle, but it's, it's pretty good. It's good enough. Hinges are really nice down there too. So. He does move pretty well. He's a, he's a short, squattier kind of figure, and those always come with limitations, but I think overwhelmingly, just by virtue of having whatever's going on underneath that tunic and how soft it is does help to enable him to move at least a little bit better than I expected. And then he's got, you know, the, the weird-looking NECA joints, which I'm still not the biggest fan of how they look, but they do help to fix what would have been some severely limited elbows had they not made them, you know, this way. Of course, what I really like about this guy is, unsurprisingly, just the aesthetics and the visuals on this one, because this whole line, I, mean, I say this whole line, there's only two figures before this and two figures now in this wave, but they've been winners as far as I'm concerned. I really, of course, loved War Duke and Grimsword was really good also. Strongheart, which I haven't gotten to also, a terrific, terrific figure. But this guy is a little bit different compared to those. Just like Grimsword was huge in comparison to the other two, Zarak is small. He's not super tiny. He's a chunky little, because, you know, I always thought he was a goblin and he's not. He's supposed to be a half orc. So that's, uh, you know, that kind of dictates his size a little bit. So he's not super small, but he's not a full size figure by any means. He is, he's thick and beefy though. And I really like this getup. I love, I love the collar, despite what it does to his articulation, you know, in terms of getting those arms kind of locked down a little bit. 
I like it. I think it looks, it's weird, and that's really what it is. I like the way it looks. It's weird. I like his outfit. I like the the sort of, you know, navy blue, almost black tunic and, and pants that he has. But then he's got this super bright blue hood. That looks really good. And, of course, there is dry brushing all over this. So, like, the hood is covered in some grit and some grime. There is a wash all over his leather goods. So, on the harness and the pouch and his gloves and the frill on the collar in particular to make it look... You know, make it look worn and make it actually look leathery to bring out some of those details. You've got more pouch work on the back. You've got a little storage piece back here on the back as well. The harness is removable, I believe. Like, if you wanted to go so far as to take him apart, because I think it's just a separate piece that sits underneath of the frill under the collar, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. You, of course, have got some, some dagger sheaths that hang down. Also, we'll talk about accessories here in a bit, of course. But I like his stature and just the... The goofy nature of this guy, he looks, you know, he's supposed to be an assassin, but he almost looks kind of wizardish. He looks like a thief in some ways. This guy could probably f fill a few different niches in terms of what you want to do with him on your shelf. Easily the, the biggest draw for this figure, though, is this bright, bright green head sculpt. And I cannot stress enough how good this head looks, the face in particular, because we can't really see the whole head under this. But it's really nicely sculpted, that sort of mischievous grin that he's got. You got some teeth popping out, and then, of course, it does have a darker green wash over top of it to bring out the sculpt and accentuate all of that detail, accentuate the line work. You've even got painted, like, moles on his face, so you get some nastiness on him. And then he does have a slight upwards glare, which at first I wasn't too sure about, but the more I look at it, the more, the more I am okay with it. And I think he looks really good with that sort of, you know, sunken set of eyes deep within this hood. And it's just a cool-looking little figure. The paint is, is really on point. The sculpt, in particular, is tremendous. And, in you know, in terms of NECA figures, this is very common, but he is textured from head to toe. So it's not, like, something extra that he got, but I really like it. It's one of those things that he is covered in, you know, stitch detail or stuff that makes the tunic and his pants and the hood feel as if it were fabric. So I really like those little details. So he's not just, you know, a smooth piece of plastic. There is a lot of texture and a lot of detail crammed into this figure all over him from top to bottom. He is a really, really nice, cool-looking little evil dude. Now, as far as some size comparisons, we have to start with the other D&D figures NECA has released so far. So we're going back to Wave 1. We've got War Duke on the, on the right and Grimsword here on the left. And, of course, you know, these two are normal size figures. But Grimsword was slightly upscaled uh, to make him seem a little bit more menacing and evil. And I really, really like just the cross-section of different sizes here. They don't have to be the same thing. There doesn't need to be a cookie-cutter size for this kind of stuff. And I really like that we have, you know, something bigger, something slightly normal size, but then him coming in at a relatively small figure, even for NECA stuff. I mean, this is a really small figure, and he's going to look good with a lot of other stuff. Obviously, I'm thinking about Mythic Legions. So, of course, let's do that. Let's pull War Duke aside, and let's do a 1.0. A standard figure here is Keltus. And then let's pull this big boy aside, and let's do a let's do a Mythic Legion's Goblin, because you know I keep thinking that he's a Goblin, he's not, he's a half orc. But there you go, he is he's in line with a Goblin's height in Mythic Legion's. He's slightly taller, but he's a lot chunkier. He's a very bulky figure by comparison. Let's do a Figuarts. Let's do here's a Super Saiyan Four Vegeta for another shorter figure. Let's pull our Goblin aside. Let's do an Ultimates figure. Here is an evil figure. There is the Super 7 Ultimate Papa Emeritus. I think Conan needs a shot at this as well, so we'll put Conan in here. I could see him fighting these guys, and of course he's not too much taller. And then let's do uh, let's do Hasbro figures. Let's move Papa aside, and there is Classified Series Scrap Iron. So as you can see, he is he's still you know NECA scale, so seven inch scale figure. He's going to be slightly tall compared to normal Hasbro stuff. But anything slightly larger, I think he's going to be able to fit in really well. He's certainly going to work well with Legions as something very different than what we've seen in that line. But he scales really nicely, of course, with the other D&D stuff. Now, as far as accessories goes, this little guy is pretty well stacked. And there's one accessory in particular that I really like, but it's all pretty solid. Overall, there's a lot of good stuff here. To start with, he obvi obviously has another head sculpt. So this is like, you know, the unhooded head. So it's basically the same thing. They're very much the exact same expression, just... One has a hood and one doesn't, but it gives you an opportunity to see more of that sculpt and see all that detail. You know, at times, depending on your lighting, uh, some of him is some of his face is going to be obscured in shadow, which of course works really well for the assassin idea. 
He does come with some hands. Now you got relaxed hands on him in the box. We get a set of fists. Of course, the set is two. You get a set of these a little like gripping hands. They're meant for these daggers as best I can tell because you get two of these. And then you also get a larger singular gripping hand, which is meant for his sword. Uh, now he does come with the weapons, of course. So we've got the little daggers here that can go in the sheaths on his belt. And they're tiny little things. They fit in there really nice. It's, it's, it's snug, but it's not too tight. Decent sculpt on it. I mean, there's something really to write home about here. It's just a little dagger, but he does have two of them, and I love weapon storage. I'll never stop uh, being a fan of that, I don't think. And then he has his grappling hook on the back, and this does have, you know, like a rope or string, whatever you want to call it. So you could conceivably hang him from something if you're daring enough. I always loved grappling hooks on toys as a kid. I don't know how much I care about them now, but there's, de there's a definite toy nostalgia thing uh, for me with that. He does come with the sword, so he's got this big, fat blade. I really like this. I'm not sure what about it is doing it for me. I think it's just the chunkiness of this sword. It's really weird looking. It looks big in, you know, next to him, but of course next to another figure it's not going to be a big sword. Uh, so it's relatively small, but it's big to this guy. And then we do have, this is the one accessory I mentioned that I really like. We get a vial of what I assume is poison. It's written on the box, I'm sure, and I just didn't read it. But you get this little vial. And I really like this because, honestly, my first thought was, you know, in terms of cannibalizing a figure or something, is to give this to Swig for Mythic Legions. But I really, really like this. This is the kind of thing that normally I wouldn't really care about, but something about it for this particular type of character, having this, like, you know, some ooze or something that's going to poison someone, I think is kind of a, a nice idea. And it just makes, it's, it's a little bit more of a dynamic kind of accessory rather than just another sword or some sort of weapon. This thing, you can play up maybe a little scene or idea with that. So he does come with, like, some really solid accessories. I don't think there's anything that I would say is unneeded here. He does have decent weapon storage also, and I really, really like this head sculpt, although I probably will always, probably always go with this, but I like being able to see more of that head. So, yeah, overall, this guy's a winner, and, and really, that's the line for me from start to finish right now. I haven't reviewed Strongheart as of this video, but He's, he's just up there, too. These are all really, really solid, and easily, for me, some of the best NECA figures. Certainly best non-turtle figures for me in a really long time. My only regret for this, this line is that they just don't seem to pump them out very fast, because we got those first two way, way back, and now it's, you know, we've only got four figures at this point. But I'm really happy to see this line continue. Uh, Zarak is a really solid entry. He's different, and I like that as well. I like some variation among my figures, so they're not all just six-foot-tall men. This guy is, you know, like a little three-and-a-half-foot-tall gremlin, goblin, half-orc, whatever he's supposed to be. But he looks really good. He moves well. He's got some really killer accessories, and it's just an all-around solid figure. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys Dungeons & Dragons Zarak. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.